to say good evening to each and every one out there this evening. We'll come into your home one more time and hope you don't turn us off, but we've got some good old songs picked out here for you this evening and hope you enjoy something we have. And if you're out there tonight and have a prayer request or a song request, well, the number's there on the bottom of your screen. You can call them in. <clears throat> Most of the time we, we can do what you do, call in, but sometimes why? Well, might be something we don't know or don't have, but we'll try and do our best for you this evening. The next fo song we have for you tonight is Farther Along. Tempted and tried to live.
time we're going to ask Tracy if she won't come and lead us in word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to come and sing your praises tonight, Lord, and we ask a special blessing on each and every one that's out there tonight, Lord, that's got needs, that's lost loved ones, and those in the high-rise, Lord, that can't get out to services, and those with sickness and troubled hearts. God, we ask you to be with Tim as he brings the message this evening, Lord, and let us always be found doing something that's uplifting to you. We always want to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't run off here, Mr. Tracy. <laughs> we need to interview you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have Tracy and her group on to help us out on the TV program. Tell us where you go to church out there, Tracy. Well, I attend Thomasville Baptist. And well, that's where uh, I go. That's where Kenny goes, too, <laughs> so I guess we're both going to a good place. <laughs> well, we're glad to have her. It's and good to be here. She, she does a great job, and, and everybody else does a great job here, too. We'd like to bring her program out to this evening to all those in the mm -hmm. hospital this evening and rest homes and the high rise and there are just so many places, you know, that people can't get out anymore and come to church. And Well, we've had some bad weather. That's kept some people in. But uh, anyhow, we want to bring your service out to you tonight. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have something you ever want to just sing, well, just call in. We'll try and do it for you. We've got a good old song here is What a Day That Will Be. And we'd like to send that out to those down there at the, the Smalls at, at uh, Kissing, or, yeah. Kissing Mill. Kissing Mill. Kissing Mill. There is coming a day when the heart it shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day. Oh, 
We've got another good old song for you here this evening, and uh, we've had a request for it different times, and the name of this is Supper Time. We'd like to send this out to our neighbor down there, uh, Bob and Janice Bennett this evening, and anybody else that likes this old song, Supper Time. When I was but a boy in days of childhood there tonight and don't have a church home to go to, why well, we'd like to invite you to one of our churches. Well, there's a lot of good churches around here and a lot of good preachers around here and we love them all. And God is real and if you, you need to go to church, people. It's just, it's just a joy to worship with different ones. Down at the cross where my Savior
sing one more song for the little people. What about Jesus Loves Me? Or would that be a good one? Get them little ones around the television there, and we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me. You got one for us this evening, or what have you got there? We'll get out of your way. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of honor and worthy of glory and worthy of power and all praise no other name but the name of jesus no other name but the name of the lord no other name but the name of jesus is worthy of honor and worthy of glory and worthy of power and all praise name is exalted far above the earth. His name is high in all the heaven. His name is exalted far above the earth. Give glory and honor and power into his name. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of the Lord. No other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of honor and worthy of glory and worthy of power and all praise. Well, what'd you get picked out there, Alan? I'm not sure. That's I found Jesus and he wasn't even lost. Oh, that's a good old song. We haven't did that for a while. I found Jesus and he wasn't even lost. We'll send that out to Cat Channel tonight. I walked away from my Lord many times Searching for something that I'd never find I couldn't see through the sun for the shine Cause what I was wanting was there all the time And he never gave up believing in me He kept believing that someday I'd see Jesus, and he wasn't even lost. I tried the Lord's way of living before, but something was missing that I wanted more. I finally found what was missing was me. I turned back to Jesus, now my soul is free. Someday I'd see Love was the reason He died on that cross I found my Jesus And He wasn't even lost Do you know what key that is, Rhonda? It's either a G or a C, I think. Well, this is C. Okay. <laughs> 
I think that's too high, isn't it? Oh, no, you want to try G? Yeah. Bear with us here. Uh, we're not sure where it's played at. Would you please send your best angel for my mama? I don't want her to make this journey all alone. Would you send the same one you sent for Dad? That's for all those that's lost their mothers out there. Come on in here, Tracy, and your group, and we'll get out of your way. We'd like to send this first song we're going to do out to Kathy Smith. It's not the one she requested, but we'd already picked these. It's But For the Blood. I have no one to blame How long to hide my face I was so ashamed All the wrongs that I had done And I knew that I had to face I was found to face a place I'll be there today My friends but for the blood But for the blood Shed on Calvary Street, but for the blood, there'd be no hope for you and me. For all my righteousness, these filthy rags, that's all I'd ever be. But for the blood, that cleansed and set me free. 
I get so low? You know the devil lets me know I'm so undeserving. I'm unworthy of God's love. Oh yes, I know it's true. Here I am with the chosen few. I'll stand before I'm saved, but by the blood. But for the blood. going to send this song out to Dot Beaver. It says she's, or Bauer, she's recovering from hip surgery, and we wish you well with that. request for old time religion and we didn't bring that in with us we'll do I saw the light if that's okay if not call back in and maybe Tim will sing that for you at the end of his service and don't worry about me and that is for Larry Casto I wondered so aimless life filled with sin I would Sorrow inside. 
We got some prayer requests here to take care of this evening, and we'd like to each and every one of you to have a part in our prayer request. <clears throat> we got Don Lewis and Rose and Ford Cutright and Boyles and Evelyn Carter and, and May Collins and her family and Julie McDaniels and Bob and Janice Bennett, Leroy Bennett, Ernest and Shirley Gifford and their grandkids, Gene Starr, Mark Sterling, Steve Mc, McNichols, Joy Davis, our troops, Becky Gould, Betty Bailey, Emma Zikafus, Bill and Teresa Richards, the family of Anita Collins, Cat Channel, Betty Osborne, our special prayer for guys laid off at the PDC, I don't know what that is. Desi Kuhn, Jim and Becky Kuhn, Augustine Schaefer, Millie, Ethel Doyle, Ed McCartney, Diane Riffle, Danny and Joe, Raymond and Barbara Mackey, Mary Godfrey. I'm sure there's many others out there this evening that need their prayers tonight. And our Lord and our God, as we come to you here this evening, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Lord, to come into the homes this evening, out there this evening. We pray, Lord, that if we've read these different names, O oh God, you know about each and every one of them, Father. And Lord, we pray that you minister to them, God, and whatever they might need, Lord. And we know many of them, Father, are sick and afflicted in one way or another, O oh God. And Lord, they've can't heal theirself, O oh God, but, Father, we know one that can, O oh Lord. And we know, Father, that you've got the power, O oh God, to, to do anything, Lord. And we, we thank you for that this evening. We pray, O oh Lord, if there be one out there tonight that God has tried everything, and, Lord, today don't know which way to turn, O oh Father. And we pray, O oh God, that they can put their life in your hands, Father. And, Lord, that you're the one, O oh God, that's the great healer. And, you're the one, Father, that can bring peace into their life, O oh Father. You're the one, O oh God, that can cause them to go to sleep at night, O oh Father. And, O oh God, we pray tonight that you'd be with Tim as he brings a message here this evening, Father, that he might have something, Lord, to, to heal the, the people, Father, from the broken hearts out there tonight. And we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name and amen. Where's old Tim at this evening? I believe he come and went to sleep out there somewhere. <clears throat> Here he comes. I don't want to you talk a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bless Tim. God bless you. Yeah, it's good to be back with you this evening. And, uh, I wanted to announce, too, that uh, February the 16th, that'll be two Sundays, not next Sunday, the Sunday after next. Uh, the Joyful Servants will be singing out at the Full Gospel Church, out where Chad uh, is, Lewis is a pastor, and they'll be there that night uh, speaking and, or singing, and they're supposed to be a, uh, a missionary maybe come and speak that night too also. So uh, that's February the 16th, uh, it starts at 6 o'clock, and uh, goes till probably eight. So, if you can come out and be with them that night, so uh, those, uh, I think that's the only announcements one to give me. But uh, it is good to be back with you once again. And uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open them to the. <laughs> Uh, Teresa is trying to get a song. She wants to sing another song, but uh, I, I, I'm going to have to uh, not let her go by tonight. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> so, uh, uh, in the tenth chapter of uh, Saint Mark, we want to read uh, some scripture. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, about blind Barnabas, and you know uh, what a a great a miracle this is and the joy that it comes to uh, uh, read about the miracles that Jesus did uh, not only in our time you know we've seen miracles uh, 
all around us and down through uh, her life, you know, that uh, we just uh, praise God for those. But, uh, you know, uh, here uh, Jesus had come out of Jerusalem and he was coming into Jericho and he would came there and he had asked him about uh, 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 some of the things they wanted and, you know, James and John spoke up that they would like to set on his uh, one on the right hand, one on the left, and they were wanting to set, and you know, have prestige. And this is right after Christ had plainly told him that, you know, he was going into Jerusalem, that uh, he would be taken in by the chief priests and that they would uh, uh, mock him and spit on him and uh, pluck his hairs, and then they would crucify him and kill him. But on the third day, he was raised again. And you know what a joy it is to know that. And as they come out of uh, Jerusalem, uh, they come into a little town of Jericho. It was outside of Jerusalem there, uh, along Jordan Valley. And it says in the 46th verse of chapter 10, it says, that, And they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people. And blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timoth, Timothus, sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, a great deal, Thou Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately his, he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Let us pray. We have a special prayer here for um, Mary... Marie Hill, uh, she just got out of the hospital, so we want to remember her if you would. Our Heavenly Father, we do just uh, come to you at this time to, uh, Lord, just ask that you would be with Marie and Lord, that all things would uh, be done in accordance with you and that uh, the healing would take place. And God, we pray that you would just not only t touch her physically, Lord, but that thou would just be with her spiritually and lift her up. And Lord, uh, let the Holy Spirit anoint into her heart, and Lord, and speak to her soul. And God, we just ask that you would just uh, continually, Lord, uh, touch people and lift them up. And God, this very hour, Lord, we just ask that your word would go out and that it would uh, uh, Present the gospel as it always does, Lord, if we just look to you and let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. And God, we just pray that it would uh, draw people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I uh, just said that they'd come out of Jerusalem and uh, come down to this town of Jericho. And uh, the funny thing about Jericho, if you read on it, it's about 800 feet below sea level, and it's kind of a, a tropical place, and uh, they have uh, a lot of warm weather. It's called the City of Palms, that they have palm trees there and grow bananas and many things, but uh, it's uh, pretty hot through the year, and they don't have a lot of rain, but... Uh, Jericho uh, is a well-known city all up through, if you remember, when they come uh, uh, out of 
the Egypt up through uh, Jericho was right across to Jordan. When they crossed over Jordan, you remember that uh, they went over and spied out the city, and there was a lady there that was a harlot, and that uh, she uh, hid the spies in her the roof of her house, and she bartered that her and her family would be saved. And you uh, know the story goes that uh, the people came and looking for them, and and. Uh, left and uh, she said when you come to the city remember me and my family and uh, spare us because we know that uh, all people that come up against your God melt before him and that your God uh, can control all things and they realized who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was. And they uh, recognized him as uh, uh, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And you know it's, it was still happening there today. This blind man, though he couldn't see, it says that when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Isn't that great that... You know, just like uh, Rahab the harlot, she recognized the God of Israel. This blind man, Barnabas, recognized Jesus as one from God of Israel that was still uh, being recognized, that could do all things and had power over all things. And you know, what a great uh, uh, thought that is as we... Uh, look here at this uh, man that he had to go outside the city as a blind man and he would beg for his uh, living that anything he'd get he'd have to ask people to give it to him and he was at the mercy of everyone else and you know to a lot of people he probably uh, didn't uh, fit very highly on their people uh, that they thought uh, you know, might be able to uh, give them something or that might have uh, some opportunity to be a servant. But, you know, here Jesus come by the way. And I want to read, it says uh, that many charged him there to hold his peace, to say, you know, uh, don't be yelling and, and getting loud uh, about trying to get this Jesus or Hundreds of people that were seeking after him, but he didn't let that bother him. It said, he cried more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And I like verse 49. It said, and Jesus stood still. Isn't it great to know that Jesus recognizes someone that's seeking him? That Jesus still does that today. Isn't it great to know that, you know, when we get determined in our heart to seek out Jesus Christ, that He stands still and He listens to anyone that is crying out to Him. He knows an obedient heart. And, you know, it's still the desire of Jesus for people to come seek Him, to uh, want to find out that he is the Savior, that he was uh, born the Son of God, but yet he didn't come as a king in a, a kingdom and that he came uh, as a humble child and that he gave his life uh, as a servant all down through this time. If you read about that's what uh, he was talking about earlier in this chapter, that uh, the disciples sought him as a king, that they would set it in his uh, kingdom and that they would have authority over people. But he said, you know, that's not the way the kingdom of God is set up. It says that... Uh, that's the way the Gentile world is set up, that they exercise their authority over one another and that they rule over one another and they, you know, try to gain uh, rule over other people. But he said, But so shall it be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. 
and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. What a blessing it is that Jesus give his life as a ransom for me. You know, I always think here about the little boy that came to play ball. And uh, you can probably uh, remember this, that, you know, whoever was the worst player in the neighborhood, they would come and stand and say, all right, you know, we can't play ball till someone picks Jimmy. Someone's got to take him on his team so we can start this game. And the feeling that, uh, you know, it is to be the last one chosen and really not feel like, you know, you're wanted and, and sought after. But that's not the way it is in the kingdom of God. I can tell you, if you would have been the only one that would have sought Jesus for salvation, he would have faced every Roman soldier that spit on his in his face that pulled the hair from his beard. He would have faced the Roman soldier that took the cat of nine tails and whipped him until he fell down from lack of strength. He would have picked up the cross and went gladly if you were the only person that would have come to knowledge of salvation. You're number one in Jesus' heart tonight. You're not on the back of the list, but Jesus makes everyone feel most wanted that tonight I can consider myself at the top of the list that if I would have been the only one that needed salvation or that would have been obedient to give my heart to him that he would have died on that cruel cross for one person. What a great thought that is to be the first in line. God chose you from before the foundations of the earth. He knew your name. It says he knew the hairs on your head. Tonight, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loved you before you was even in your mother's womb. And he came here along this road purposely for this one man. I believe when he stopped and stood still, he had one purpose, one person in mind to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yes, blind Bartimaeus needed the sight, but all he got more than that. Praise be to God. You know tonight that we may come because we're financially broke. Or we may come because our health has left us and you know, no longer we have uh, health to stand on our own two legs. Maybe we're stuck in a bed and someone has to take us uh, up and down and, and do everything for us. That doesn't make you last in line to Jesus Christ. He'd wait patiently along the road knowing that one day your heart would be obedient to seek Him as a Savior. Sometimes He waits a whole lifetime for people. They pass by and they hear other people talk about Him. This Jesus, that it says that many people were following that day. But they never think, well, I don't need Him. Maybe they're not down to a place they think they can get along on their own. But I can tell you, no matter where you're at, you need Jesus Christ because just take one deep breath and I can tell you, 
the very air that we breathe was made by Jesus Christ. The very heart that pounds in your chest was made by Jesus Christ. The body that we live in, it houses a soul that it said from the beginning of time, God created man and breathed in him the breath of life and give him a living soul. He created us to worship him. And I can tell you, there is an empty spot until you come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you begin to be obedient to the, what the Bible says, what we're created to do. You know, it's a wonderful thing. As this blind Barnabas, he wouldn't stay still. He knew in his heart that this man Jesus could make him whole. And, you know, Jesus came and stopped and told him, bring him to him. And they went and told him to come. And it says he cast his garments off and he came. Tonight, that's what we have to do. We have to come humbly. We can't come of our own goodness. We can't come tonight to the Father but by one name, and that name is Jesus Christ. Barnabas came that day, and Jesus said, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said, That I might receive my sight. Jesus knew exactly what he was going to ask, but yet he asked him, What would I do for you? And Jesus told him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. You know, this is a perfect picture of an old sinner that has to come humbly. Nothing of himself, but he comes seeking salvation. Nothing of my righteousness, but by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There is none righteous, no, not one. And he came and he received his sight. And it said, Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. You know what a wonderful passage this is. Now I want to turn over to uh, Acts, the seventh chapter, the 54th verse. Acts chapter 7, verse 54. And I will read that scripture to you. It just so happened that I read in, uh, to you about Jesus stopped and stood still. And this is another picture. Only this time it was a man named Stephen. He'd come to tell the Scribes and the Pharisees just exactly what they had done when they crucified Jesus. He condemned their way to worship, to try to go to God outside of the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, that all has to go away and you have to come to Jesus Christ just like blind Barnabas. Without your sight, without any righteousness, you have to lay your garments aside and you see the scribes and Pharisees didn't want to do that. They wanted to maintain their place in the, the hierarchy of the church. Well, I can tell you, Jesus had just told the disciples that if you want to be high up, you become low down and become a servant. You want the joy of God to work in you. You start being a servant to those around you, and I can tell you, God will bless you abundantly. This man Stephen had took a stand and told him just exactly where they stood in the eyes of God that they had crucified their very son, his very son. And it said, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost stood up steadfast looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Behold, 
I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Barnabas, when he received his sight, the first thing he saw was the Son of God standing before him. At this time, they stoned Stephen and they killed him and they stripped him of the life that they thought they could take it away. But see, there's more to life than just this human body. There's an eternal soul that has to have a place to go. Tonight, you might think that you can live to be 100 years old and it'll pass before you know it. But I can tell you, you're going to need Jesus Christ. You need Him to stand when you call on His name. And it says here that they stoned Stephen, calling God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I can tell you, death is not when we quit breathing in this old body. Death is to be separated from God. When we leave this life, I can tell you, you're going to need Jesus Christ to place a robe of righteousness on you when you cry out and ask forgiveness of sin. He gives you all of His righteousness and takes away the sins that you have committed. You know, tonight, death only comes to those that don't believe. Stephen had said he fell asleep. He went on and received his reward. Jesus stood still and watched him give up his bodily life that he might gain a robe of righteousness. And you know tonight what a joy it is to tell you that you don't have to die tonight. If you'll call upon the name of Jesus and confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I can tell you, Saved us from eternal damnation in hell. And to be a child of His is to gain eternal life where God sits, where Jesus waits for those that believe. Tonight, if you've never done that, I would tell you, kneel down wherever you're at, confess with your mouth, acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, and He'll save you. Thank you and good night.